So what is going on Koi Partners? Welcome back to a brand new and first episode here from Japan. I am sitting on the viewing point in the Yamakoshi mountains. That are the mountains where all the koi breeders, well most of the koi breeders are located. So this is my first trip since two and a half years that I'm able to be back here in Japan. This is my last day, but I had to record this video because I will be in the airplane tomorrow and I really wanted to sh give you a small sneak preview of my last 11 days here in Japan. First of all, I had to travel all the way from Amsterdam to Japan. And normally it takes around 10 hours to travel via Russia to Japan. Quite a small, short flight, most of the time a fun flight. But this year, everything is different. I'm not complaining because of this current situation in Ukraine and Russia, planes have to fly through the Middle East. That means that my first flight was around six hours to Abu Dhabi. And from there, I had to fly 10 hours to Japan. And tomorrow on my way back, I will be probably a bit longer on my way. Anyway, um, I arrived really good here in Japan. I was very surprised about how quick I entered customs and how quick I entered all the different security checks. Traveled really fast from Narita Airport to Tokyo Station, where I jumped on the, uh, of course, the bullet train to Nagaoka. It takes around one hour, 40 minutes, one hour, 50 minutes to get here. And from Nagaoka Station, it's for me five minutes walking with my suitcases to my hotel. I always stay in the same hotel in Nagaoka. It's the first hotel that I ever visited here back in the days 2013 or 14. It's great to be there. They still remember my name. It's kind of crazy. So I arrived on Friday. I had to pick up my car and went for dinner and then I went to my bed. I'm a person that has a lot of problems with my jet lag. Always takes me a lot of days to recover from my flights. But anyhow, anyway, it went pretty good this time because of the long flight time and I arrived around 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, so I want to thank, first of all, before you going to see the next episode, that, because that will be launched next Friday, um, I want to thank a lot of people, uh, but first of all, I want to thank the Shintaro Koi Farm for everything they've done, arranging my paperwork, being a guest at their farm. And what I've did here in Japan, you will see in different small episodes on my channel and of course one bigger and long movie. So the content that you're not seeing in my smaller videos, my vlogs, will be shown in my longer one hour documentary here again from Japan. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I have a special story to tell. I want to take you within my personal story. Uh, for me, this is also kind of strange to present myself in front of the camera. It's not the way how I normally make my videos. It's not within my comfort zone, but I think it's good that you guys getting to know me a bit better. And that's something that will come back in the future vlogs that I was here in Japan. So Shintaro Koi Farm, Saito-san, Kosuke-san, Kensuke, his wife, Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you so much for ar arranging everything here. But also the other breeders here that were happy to see me, like the Yagenji Koi Farm, Torazo Koi Farm, Maruhiro Koi Farm, Dainichi. There were so many breeders that were so happy to get people again around their farms. And for me, I was very thankful that yeah, they, they were there for me and it was quite important. Uh, I think you guys as a viewer also missed a lot of the videos here from Japan. So there's one big difference with the period that I'm traveling. Japan is now open for I think eight weeks for business travelers. It's still closed for tourists. Yes, there are some tourists allowed. I think it's around 50 tourists a day that have to do guided tours throughout Japan. It's kind of insane, but I hope in the next few months Japan will fully open again and tourists are able to visit the beautiful country here. Getting back to the story, uh, for me this is great to be here and this is the first time in 10 years that I'm seeing Niigata in summertime. That means that also the breeders have a lot of different uh, work to do uh, compared to the winter period when they are busy with tosai, uh, selecting the tosai, selling tosai. And the biggest difference is with the autumn. 
Uh, autumn time is probably the best time to be here, uh, temperature wise, but also you can enjoy all the new koi that are harvested from the mud ponds in the koi houses. You have probably seen all the videos and I will try to put some of the clips throughout this video. But it's, it's really f a fun and great time. The breeders are happy, they are seeing the results, they are selling their new harvest koi. And customers are also happy when they see their new koi that are harvested from the mud pond and they are bigger, stronger, better colors. That is something mysterious. You have to experience by yourself. So if you have the possibility to do an Azugari project with one of the breeders, then you definitely should do that because it's something great to see your koi growing from a small size to a bigger size. Uh, I also have a koi here in Azugari. Uh, it's fun to see them grow. This is something I really like to see the progress of a fish, how a fish at one year old can be so much different when there are three, four, five or even older. Um, so this time of the year everything is quite different, um, <laughs> it's really hot, I'm tired, you can see it on my face probably, but it's hot, it's, the humidity is very high, everything is green compared to all the different colors in autumn, but I really liked it, most of the breeders were surprised to see me because it's not really the time of the year to come here because most of the koi houses are empty, all the koi are inside the mud ponds in, in the mountains here to grow, but I have seen a lot of different other stuff. This time of the year breeders have to work very hard and I think many people, including myself, underestimate how important it is what the breeders are doing here and how much work they have to do before that little tiny egg becomes a really small baby koi and after that becomes Tosai, Nisai, two years old, three years old, before it becoming that bigger koi or becoming even a champion. And that is something that people, I think, need to know. Uh, I get a lot of times, a lot of questions about the koi and how everything goes. Uh, and I hope to show you a bit of that uh, during this story that I've been here in Japan. So again, without giving too much, without saying too much, because I really want that you are guys are going to watch my smaller episodes on my channel in the upcoming weeks, but also going to watch the big documentary. That is something that I will put a lot of time and effort in. So uh, I will still try to upload two times a week, but if there is one week that I'm only uploading one video, you know why, because I'm uploading a big, longer movie that has to be, yeah, it will probably take a lot of time to create it. So my plans here are leaving tomorrow again to the airport of Narita, then fly back through Abu Dhabi, back to Amsterdam. Finally being home, seeing my son again, uh, I really miss him. Uh, and then I will stay with him for uh, luckily a week. And then I'm going on a new trip. It won't be Koi related, a small holiday of five days. And then I will be back for two or three weeks in Holland. And then I'm going to do a very special tip, trip I won't surprise, I won't tell you the destination yet. Uh, some of the people know, but I'm going to a very special destination in July. That will be an epic trip, uh, some things you have never seen before. And then I will be home and then I will record a lot of videos, a lot of ponds, do a lot of videos with my partners, for example, Select Koi and Oase, our new partner on our channel. Uh, I will go visit the factory of Oasa, I will go visit some customers of there, I will visit some customer ponds, some systems, and we are going to create a lot of um, informational and educational f videos about building ponds, choosing the right filtration system, uh, the advantages, the disadvantages, we will show you everything, and that's something that I'm going to do with my partner Oasa. I'm very proud of that. You will find everything about that later on my channel. So that's something that I'm going to do and then October 2022. So if you are a dealer or a hobbyist and you are going to Japan this autumn, I want to know it. Let me know in the comments if I see you here in October or November at the Yamakoshi Mountains in Japan. It's now three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I've never recorded <laughs> a personal video of 11 minutes, almost 11 minutes. It's quite difficult for me to be in front of the camera, but I promise you I will try more uh, and I hope to know you a bit more as a viewer and that you get to know a bit more of me as a creator. 
uh, because that's something that I own you guys. I hope I uh, earned your subscription today. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I think 30% is only subscribed of all the viewers. So you would help me a lot to subscribe to my channel. Uh, put the thumbs up, uh, leave a comment, you know, the things that, uh, that, that, that does the job to get a video, uh, to get more views on a video. For now, I'm going to end this video. I'm going to jump in my car, uh, visit maybe one more or two more breeders and just sit down and enjoy some of the koi. Then I go back, going to sort out all of the content that I've made here. Start making the documentary and all the smaller vlogs. Thank you so much, guys. I'm going to sit in that chair for 10 minutes and then um, I'm going to see you in the first video next Friday.